I welcome you all to the session of thermal engineering basic and applied and the topic of our today's discussion is the thermodynamic analysis of SI engine. So, before going to have this analysis today, let us first review several processes those already we have discussed and then we can try to map those processes again in different thermodynamic planes essentially to estimate the efficiency because SI engine that is the spark ignition engine we had seen that we are supplying fuel and at the cost of that fuel we are trying to get some work output and we have discussed that the stored energy that is the energy the chemical energy which is remaining stored within the fuel is converted to the internal energy of the gases inside the you know combustion chamber and that internal energy is you know eventually converted to the work and which is available at the crank shaft. So, you can understand that again through several processes using this particular engine we are trying to have energy conversion and since it is nothing but the conversion of energy from its one form to another form we need to you know calculate the efficiency or performance. So, for why it is called thermodynamic analysis because we had seen that you know if we just try to recall that so, if we try to recall several processes and then we will find that you know inside the combustion chamber pressure and volume, pressure, volume and temperature of the working substance these three properties are continuously changing. So, if we need to know what is the volume at the end of any particular process then we need to you know know about several thermodynamic uh, relations laws from there we can quantify what would be the uh, work output finally in terms of several thermodynamic properties. So, uh, let us first review again several processes those constitute together to form the cycle of SI engine. And to do that let us first draw the schematic. So, we can see this is a schematic depiction of a spark ignition engine of course, uh, we did not show several components, but those which are required only to you know understand several processes. We have discussed that engine cylinder, so engine is, is you know piston is having a to and fro movement between these two locations that is bottom dead center and top dead center. And we had seen that 
there are two valves intake valve and exhaust valve. So, when intake valve is open exhaust valve is closed piston comes from T D C to B D C and that is the intake stroke and in this stroke we are taking rather fresh charge is drawn into the cylinder. So, this is the intake stroke next stroke is exhaust is remaining closed, but when piston reaches at B D C at the end of the intake stroke this in intake valve is closed and rather intake valve is allowed to be closed and then piston comes from B D C to T D C. So, the fresh charge which is there inside the you know engine cylinder then that gets compressed. So, the fresh charge gets compressed in the stroke and that is the compression stroke. So, when piston comes at T D C that is at the end of the compression stroke you know both valves are closed what is done this is the clearance volume that you can see. So, basically this is the volume. So, this is the clearance volume. Right. So, the compressed charge is remaining there in the clearance volume and spark plug switch is on. So, you know I mean spark is initiated and this is the combustion that we have discussed and it is because of this combustion you know that the rise in pressure and temperature inside the cylinder will be excessively high that high pressure create a thrust on the piston face and the piston comes again back to B D C from T D C and that is the power stroke that we have discussed. Both valves are remaining even closed during that stroke that is the power stroke and that is also known as expansion. And finally, when piston is at B D C that is at the end of the power stroke then exhaust valve is you know allowed to open piston again comes from B D C to T D C and inside the combustion chamber combustion gases are I mean these gases expel out through the exhaust manifold to the ambience. So, we have discussed about all these four processes several times in previous classes. Now, you have understood that one stroke is power stroke that is the stroke in which we are getting power that means, if you try to understand out of these four processes rather four strokes only one stroke is power stroke because we are getting power remaining other three strokes are ideal stroke and we need to supply power to the you know a crankshaft. So, uh, these all four processes are you know occurring rather these four processes occur in a cyclic manner rather these four processes constitute together to form the cycle of the SI engine. Because it is spark ignition engine, so combustion will not be completed until and unless spark plus which is on. So, now let us try to map all these processes in two different thermodynamic planes one is PV another is TS and in this you know why we are trying to map all these processes in thermodynamic planes because as I said we need to understand several thermodynamic properties both at the beginning and end of the of each stroke only to calculate the thermal performance or thermodynamic efficiency of this cycle which is very important. Now, for the analysis of this part for this analysis for the analysis of SI engine what we can do we have understood the cycle and this cycle you know it is it is it is not a do thermodynamic cycle because you know at the end of the cycle all the working substance which is nothing but several you know gases and that will leave out from the uh, engine cylinder. So, those gases are not cycle back into the process. So, it is it is an open cycle. So, it is it is better to say a mechanical cycle. So, for the analysis of SI engine this cycle should be approximated with an air standard cycle and the air standard cycle which is used which is used for this particular analysis that is for the analysis of SI engine that is known as auto cycle. So, German engineer Nicholas August Otto who invented this cycle and that is 
uh, why this cycle is named as auto cycle. So, let me write Uh, Nicholas August Otto, who invented and to honor uh, him, the cycle is named as Otto cycle. So, let us briefly process all the uh, map all the processes in thermodynamic planes. So, first is PV, another one is TS. Why are going to have TS? Because you know that we are trying to understand what 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 is the power output, what is the work output at the cost of some input energy. You know that if we try to understand, if we try to calculate the area under any process line in TS plane that gives directly the heat uh, transfer heat exchange that we have studied in our thermodynamics and that is from second law. So, basically any if we can map all the processes in T s plane and if we try to calculate the area under any process line in T s plane that is that is give that that, that, that gives us the heat interaction. So, now uh, say let us assume that the pressure is like this. So, this is the pressure. So, this is P atm and if we consider, so this is let us say this is V B, uh, this is V and this is V B D C and say this is V T D C. So, piston is having movement between these two location that is V B D C and V T D C that, that is what we have seen in the in a, in, a, in the last uh, figure. So, this is when piston is at V D C the volume corresponds to V V D C, when piston is at T D C the volume of the gas or volume inside the cylinder is the V T D C. Now, uh, we can map the process rather processes. So, first process is intake. So, maybe piston is at V D C and is coming from coming to V D C and this is the process. So, let us say this is process this is point 1 and then it is coming to 2. So, piston comes here. So, this is the process. Constant pressure, pressure is constant because you know uh, this is a constant pressure process volume is changing and what is the pressure? Pressure is the atmospheric pressure. So, basically I mean uh, though we can say because we should have some pressure difference between the uh, atmospheric pressure and pressure inside the engine cylinder and that is the driving force, but so it is as it can be approximated approximated as the constant pressure uh, pro, uh, intake process. And then when piston is at 2, the next process is compression process that is the compression stroke, then you know this is coming to let us say point 3. So, piston is again coming back from B D C to T D C. So, the you know uh, press charge is getting compressed and this process can be approximated as an isentropic process. Now, I will be coming to that point and then when piston is at T D C what we have discussed we have discussed that you know uh, say this is point 4. So, spark plug switch will be on and combustion will be initiated and will be completed and it is because of this combustion pressure and temperature inside the cylinder will be high. So, you can see that pressure increases, but the volume is remaining constant more or less. It is assumed that the entire combustion will be completed when, when piston is at T D C. So, it takes a very less time and it is approximated as a constant volume heat addition that is the combustion process. And finally, piston comes from T D C to V D C again 
you know following this isentropic process we are assuming that you know the process is isentropic that is that there is no heat interaction between the system and the surroundings and that too I mean uh, it is frictionless process. So, I will tell you because these are these are you know approximated processes. So, 4 to 5 and finally, when piston is at BDC you know when piston is at BDC basically exhaust valve is allowed to open and momentarily certain amount of combustion gases which are there inside the cylinder at a high pressure will leave out and when the combustion gases are you know coming out from the engine cylinder they are carrying certain amount of enthalpy certain amount of energy. So, that is basically exhaust. So, certain amount of combustion gases will leave out from the combustion chamber or engine cylinder and it will take certain amount of heat. So, heat loss. So, that process is also known as constant volume you know heat rejection. So, say 2 comma 6. So, basically this is the you know constant volume exhaust. So, as if certain amount of heat is getting rejected from the system that is from the engine cylinder at constant volume. So, momentarily when piston is at VDC exhaust valve is allowed to open and certain amount of you know combustion gases will leave out. So, this is the uh, constant volume heat rejection process. Now, if we try to map all these processes in T s plane. So, now when piston is again coming from T d c that is B d c to T d c to complete the exhaust. So, when we open the exhaust valve momentarily certain amount of combustion gases will leave out that is true, but eventually you need to clear all the gases that is, those are there inside the cylinder and piston will come from B d c to T d c and that process is 6 to 1 to complete the cycle right. Try to understand I would like to tell you one important point over here you know that process 1 to 2 and 6 to 1 these two processes are same and they are same thermodynamically they cancel each other. So, while analyzing SI engine or the cycle we can analyze keeping the processes 1 to 2 and 6 to 1 left off from the figure. It is not necessary that we have to analyze the cycle considering these two processes because these two processes are thermodynamically same. So, they cancel each other. So, if we can consider that it is convenient to represent only the processes 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5 and 5 to 2, 5 to 6 or 5 to 2 because point points 2 and 6 are same. So, let us 2 to 3 that we have approximated isentropic process and then so this is 2 this is 3 then 3 to 4 you can see the temperature will increase 3 to 4 is you can see the it is 3 to 4 is constant volume heat addition that is combustion process. So, pressure has increased from P 3 to P 4 temperature also will increase and that is reflected over here and finally, Four to five is the expansion, and it is because of this expansion, you know, temperature of the working substance as and pressure will reduce, and that you can see from both these uh, diagrams. And finally, five to two or six, because I am not going to write six. Five to two, the you know, I send no, five to two. That is, I you know, constant volume. Five to that is constant volume heat rejection that you, you know you can see that the temperature will reduce. So, T 2 is less than T 5. So, these are the P V and T S plane. Now, if we try to analyze the performance of the SI engine. So, let us uh, discuss certain issues. What are those? You know we have discussed that to analyze this cycle to analyze the performance of SI engine these cycles which are having four different processes are compared with an air standard cycle and that cycle was invented first by Nicholas August Otto and that is known as Otto cycle. So, basically we are trying to compare all the processes in 
all the processes which constitute together to form the cycle of SI engine can be approximated uh, with an year standard cycle. So, when you are trying to analyze all the processes by using an year standard cycle, we can assume that the working substance even what is there for, for the SI engine as an ideal gas. So, we are considering working substance to be an ideal gas for the analysis and it is due to the fact that we are assuming that the cycle is appro approximated you know uh, by an air standard cycle. So, for if we assume that it is not purely air, it is air fuel mixture that is during the compression stroke. Again, for the expansion stroke, it is not only purely air and you know fuel, rather it is several components of the you know combustion uh, products. So, combustion product. So, what we can write by assuming that uh, air standard cycle. So, for air standard cycle, we will be using several ideal gas relationship. I am just listing them down uh, because we will be using those for to, to, to analyze this cycle. So, we know that uh, P V equal to R T and it is better because you know for while we are trying to analyze it is better to analyze per unit mass of the working substance that is in a specific uh, using the specific volume. So, P V equal to M R T uh, then we can use uh, P equal to rho R T we can use D H equal to C P D T as I told we are using specific quantities, it is better to analyze per unit uh, mass of the working substance d u equal to C V D T because we, we have uh, studied about all these in our basic thermodynamic course and we also can write you know that uh, that is P V to the power k equal to constant. We also can write T V to the power k minus 1 equal to constant. We also can write T P to the power 1 minus k upon k to the power equal to constant. Okay. So, we can write all these expression. Right. So, uh, we have written we will be using all this expressions while analyzing the uh, SI engine uh, performance. Now, uh, let me introduce here one term that is very important. You know that piston is having essentially movement between these two location that is BDC and TDC. So, when piston is at BDC, volume of the cylinder the volume corresponding to that other I can say when piston is at BDC. So, this is V BDC right volume of the working substance is V BDC. When piston is at TDC volume of the working substance is V TDC. Now, the ratio of these two volumes V BDC by V TDC is, is known as the compression ratio of the engine. So, this is the compression ratio. So, when piston is at VDC, volume is VVDC, when piston is at TDC, volume of the you know working substance is VTDC, ratio of these two volumes is known as the compression ratio of the engine. So, VVDC by VTDC is RC, we also can write VVDC by V T D C equal to R C. So, this R C is compression ratio. Okay. Okay. So, now if we go to do the mathematical analysis for for you know the quantification of thermal performance. So, let us first consider process 2 to 3 because we are not going to consider process 1 to 2 and 6 to 1 as I said. 
these two processes are thermodynamically same, so they cancel each other. So, process 2 to 3, let us first consider process 2 to 3. Process 2 to 3, what is this process? Process is isentropic compression. So, there is no heat interaction, frictional effect is neglect, neglected because let me tell you one thing, those are basically you know basically kind of uh, not the uh, ideal process, but we are trying to approximate essentially to quantify the thermal efficiency. In reality frictional effect will be there and also we cannot really prevent heat loss, but uh, we can tell that these assumptions are not very bad assumption and at as if the process is are not violating severely from the isentropic process. So, so uh, the process is not deviating from the isentropic process severely. So, now if we if we write it for the isentropic process, so what we had seen that you know q 2 3 or q 2 3 equal to 0, no heat interaction, while this w 2 th 3 equal to P 3 V 3 minus P 2 V 2 by 1 minus k that is R T 3 minus T 2 divided by 1 minus k. Now, I would like to tell you one important thing, see this is the expression of work done, because this is work which is done you know on the compression on the on the mixture. So, basically if we try to write the first law of thermodynamics applied to a system, it is not for a flow system that is first law of thermodynamics for a non flow system, you know for the cyclic process, then we can write this uh, del Q equal to d u plus del w. Okay. So, this is in the specific form we can write del cube equal to del u plus del w. So, this is equal this is 0, there is no heat interaction. So, we can write that w 2 2 3 uh, w 2 2 3 because this is this w 2 2 3 you also can write W 2 2 3 that is the convention only, uh, you know writing convention using different style. So, it is what we can write that is if we integrate u 2 minus u 3, right. So, this is u 2 minus u 3. Now, so is a uh, this is the work done. So, we can get it using this ideal gas equation and we have also seen that it can be written in terms of the internal energies. So, this is uh, u 2 minus u 3. So, we can write that is equal to u 2 minus u 3, right. So, this is the you know work done. Next process is if we go to the slide process is 3 to 4. So, that is the constant volume heat addition that mimics the combustion process in practical applications and reality. So, we can write process 3 to 4 constant volume process. So, work done is 0. So, basically W 3 to 4 equal to 0 what about q 3 4? So, q 3 4 equal to m constant volume process. So, C v t 4 minus t 3. What about m? See this m is you know that mass of air plus mass of fuel that is the mass of the mixture. It should be m m mixture. So, if you try to write in the specific form, then we can write Q 3 to 4 equal to 
C V into uh, T 4 minus T 3. So, this is very important I am putting this quantity in a box. Okay. Next process is if we go to the previous slide next process is 4 to 5. This is again isentropic expansion that is the power stroke. right? So, if we write here process 3 to 4. So, this is constant volume heat addition that is the combustion process. Similarly, process 2 to 3 is a isentropic compression. Okay. So, uh, process 3 to 4 is fine. Next is process 4 to 5. So, we can write process 4 to 5 So, this is again isentropic expansion that is the power stroke. So, I am not going to write again whether the valves will remain closed or open because you know. So, this process is power stroke both valves are remaining closed power stroke. So, what about the uh, this is isentropic process. So, no heat interaction. So, basically we can write Q 4 to 5 or Q 4 to 5 equal to 0. Right? What about W 4 to 5? It would be you know it is very important you can try to understand that it would be P 5 V 5 minus P 4 V 4 divided by 1 minus k that is R T 5 minus T 4 divided by 1 minus k. Right? So, that is what we can write. So, that is uh, in terms of internal energies. So, that is u 4 minus u 5. So, we can write C v into T 4 minus T 5. So, this is T 4 minus T 5. Okay. Because del Q equal to d u plus del w this is equal to 0. So, W 4 to 5 will be equal to W 4 minus sorry uh, U 4 minus U 5 and that is nothing but C 5 into T 4 minus T 5. Similarly, you know here also here also we can write this is equal to C V into T 2 minus T 3. Right? Okay. So, we have written process 4 to 5 again. So, we are left with the last process that is process 5 to 2, right? Because this is the blow down. So, constant volume blow down. So, immediately after opening the exhaust valve though the piston is remaining at V D C certain amount of combustion gases will come out from the engine cylinder and those gases will carry certain amount of energy. So, I mean as if you know heat is getting lost. So, this is the Q out and this is Q in. So, 
as I told you that you can directly get it from the area under the process line in T s plane. Okay. So, what we can do? We can next calculate the process 5 to 2. So, process 5 to 2, I am not going to write 6 because it is these two points are same. Uh, so, uh, or 5 to 6. So, this is the process is constant volume. heat rejection, some books it is written blow down, constant volume process. So, W 5 to 2 or W 5 to 6 equal to 0, but we can write you know cube 5 to 2 or cube 5 to 6 equal to m of mixture C v into this would be equal to uh, if we go to the previous slide, if we go to the previous slide. So, this would be T 6 minus T 5 or T 2 minus T 5. we can write T 2 minus T 5 or M M C V into T 6 minus T 5, same because T 2 equal to T 6. Okay. So, in the specific form cube 5 to 2 or cube 5 to 6 is C V into T 2 minus T 5 or C V into T 6 minus T 5. So, we have I am again making or keeping this quantity in a box. I am writing. So, this is basically heat rejection right if we go to the previous slide so that is basically heat addition so we are supplying this heat to the cycle through the combustion and we are supplying fuel right while out of this heat being supplied to the cycle, you can understand this is the amount of heat is going to be rejected. So, this is not the useful heat. So, you can understand that we are not able to utilize the heat totally. So, certain amount of work that we will be getting from this process is not equal to the input energy. So, definitely we can define thermal or thermodynamic efficiency of the cycle. So, if we write the you know thermodynamic efficiency of the cycle or thermal efficiency of the auto cycle say eta auto equal to W net by Q in that you have studied in uh, thermodynamic course. So, we can write in again specific form that is Q out divided by Q in right. So, or W net divided by Q in. So, 
from there we can write it. Now, what is Q out? That is the heat is being rejected. So, we can write that is 1 minus per unit mass we have tried to calculate. So, that is C V into T 2 minus T 5, right. So, we can straight away write C V into T 2 minus T 5. So, we can write it C V into T 2 minus T 5. Whereas, because we are not going to write 6, because this is T 2 is T 2 equal to T 6 and what is heat in that is Q in C V into T 4 minus T 3, C V into T 4 minus T 3. We can do some algebraic manipulation and we can write it. So, if we go to the next slide. So, eta auto equal to 1 minus we can write it 1 minus 1 minus T 5 minus T 2 divided by T 4 minus T 3 right T 4 minus T 3. So, we can write 1 minus T 2 upon T 3 into T 5 upon T 2 minus 1 divided by T 4 by T 3 minus 1. So, now I will be doing one important uh, analysis. So, what we can write here is you know what is T 2 by T 3 that is V 3 by V 2 to power k minus 1. That is in the beginning I had written if we go to the previous slide and I had listed down these expressions. I had listed down all these expression of uh, ideal gas expression, ideal gas relations. So, T v power k minus 1 is equal to constant from there we can write it T 2 by T 3 equal to v, T 2 by T 3 equal to V 3 by V 2 power k minus 1. Okay. Now, try to understand if we go to the P V plane. So, this V 3 equal to V 4 and V 2 equal to V 5, right. T 3 V 3 equal to V 4 equal to V T D C and V 2 equal to V 5 equal to V B D C. So, I can write this, I can write this V 3 equal to V 4 and V 2 equal to V 5 power k minus 1 and this is again nothing but T 5 by T 4. So, T 2 by T 3 equal to T 5 by T 4 we can write therefore, T 5 by T 2 equal to T 4 by T 3. So, this is say one equation. If we use this equation T 5 equal to T 2 T 5 by T 2 equal to T 4 by T 3, you can see this will get cancelled. So, the quantities both in numerator and denominator will get cancelled and then we can write 1 minus T 2 by T 3, right. So, what is T 2 by T 3? that is V 3 by V 2 power k minus 1. So, that is 1 minus V 2 by sorry V 3 by V 2 power k minus 1. I have already defined one you know term today. If we go to the previous slide wherein I have defined this term is this. 
compression ratio is V B D C by V T D C. Just try to remember the compression ratio is the ratio which is defined as the ratio of uh, as, as the uh, which is defined as the ratio of V B D C to V T D C. So, when piston is at B D C the volume to the volume when piston is at T D C. Now, for this particular case when V 3 equal to V T D C and V 2 equal to V B D C. So, for this case R C equal to V B D C by V T D C. So, that is equal to V 2 by V 3 that we can write from here that is also equal to V 5 by V 4. So, V 2 by V 3 equal to R C that we should remember now. If we go to the slide V 3 by V 2 equal to then 1 upon R C. So, we can write eta auto equal to 1 minus 1 upon R C power k minus 1, because V 2 by V 3 that is R C that we had we have defined just few minutes back. Let me go to that slide again V 2 by V 3 equal to R C right. So, V 3 by V 2 would be 1 upon R C. So, we have written. So, you know that is very important. Uh, efficiency of the auto cycle can be written this is 1 minus 1 upon R c power k minus 1. So, uh, if we uh, box this, if we put this quantity in a box. So, this is the uh, mathematical expression of the thermal efficiency of auto cycle. Right? So, thermal efficiency of the auto cycle can be expressed in terms of the compression ratio. So, try to understand higher the compression ratio higher will be the efficiency right but that is within the range of a certain value so even for the si engine compression ratio is fixed and using within you know working within this particular range if we increase the compression ratio efficiency of the auto cycle will increase okay so uh, what we can write is now that if we go to the next slide, if we try to plot, so this is R c and this is eta auto. So, if we start from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. When R c equal to 1, when R c equal to 1, then thermal efficiency is eta 1, eta you know when uh, 0. So, you can understand that if we start from here, it varies like this. So, this is the variation of thermal efficiency of auto cycle versus the compression ratio plot. What we can understand? If we increase the compression ratio efficiency increase. So, if we summarize today, we have discussed about several processes which are important to analyze the SI engine and we have mapped all those processes in two different thermodynamic planes. We have compared all the processes by using an air standard, I mean all the processes, I mean those processes constitute together to form a cycle 
and that cycle we have compared by using an air standard cycle, which is the Otto cycle, German engineer Nicholas August Otto who first invented the cycle and from there using the air standard equation, we have tried to quantify the thermal efficiency of Otto cycle and we have seen that the thermal efficiency of the Otto cycle can be written in terms of the compression ratio of the engine. Higher the compression ratio, efficiency will be higher within the working range of the or allowable range of the compression ratio of SI engine. So, with this I stop here today and we shall continue our discussion in the next class. Thank you.